Chapter 36, Aji, you are finally here, knowing that an Yaz had a nosebleed, Su Jian's first reaction was to have a good laugh, ha ha ha, an Yaz, to think that you will also have a day like this, Su Jian felt that it was a pity he could not see that scene, however, Su Jian's mood became gentle knowing the reason for an Yaz's nosebleed, the weather was hot, so it was easy to get heaty one, having a nosebleed was nothing to be surprised of, however, Thinking about the time when an Yaz's nosebleed occurred, this reason would seem dubious. Back at home, when the two of them were in their room, Su Jian stared at an Yaz and studied him carefully. An Yaz furrowed his brows. What's wrong? Su Jian said sincerely, Yaz, it really was my misunderstanding earlier. You are indeed not a homosexual. An Yaz. Till evening, An Yaz did not speak to Su Jian at all. However, Su Jian did not mind it. Additionally, he even specially asked the cook to prepare some cooling food too, for him. No matter what, An Yaz took care of him every day. First, An Yaz brought him to watch a movie. Today, An Yaz bought him clothes and an aircraft carrier model. An Yaz also bought him an anime figurine. He was not someone that did not know how to show gratitude. He should at least show his care for An Yaz. Hence, during their meal, the family saw a scene that was different from their normal days. Normally, it was usually an Yai's silently placing food into Su Jian's bowl and Su Jian was in charge of eating happily. Whereas today, it was vice versa. Su Jian placed a large piece of bitter gourd into an Yai's bowl and said enthusiastically, Yai's, eat more of this. Your body today is too heaty. You need to balance it out. I once heard that heatiness can be caused by spleen and kidney deficiency 3. You have to take care of your body. An Yaz's anger cooled down, but it brought down the surrounding temperature as well. With a straight face, he didn't speak to Su Jian for the whole night. However, no matter how suffocated an Yaz felt, Su Jian was not affected at all. He was happily playing with the aircraft carrier model an Yaz had bought for him. One night passed. In the morning, an Yaz's feeling of suffocation dissipated when he saw the girl sleeping sweetly in his embrace. He silently looked at the sleeping person in his arms. Pulling the person closer into his embrace, he closed his eyes again. Only when the person made a movement did an Yaz opened his eyes again. Su Jian saw him wake up and greeted him with sleepy eyes. Good morning. Good morning. An Yaz sat himself up. Su Jian rested his head on his chest and wouldn't move away. I don't feel like getting off the bed. Hearing the blurry and soft whisper, An Yaz's voice unconsciously got gentler, then sleep for a while more. I can't. Su Jian muttered blurrily, I am hungry. An Yaz lost his smile. He looked up at the aircraft carrier that was placed neatly on the carpet beside the bed. He knitted his brows and sighed. Do you like it that much? hugging and playing with it for the whole night, he couldn't even tell just who was ignoring who. What? Su Jian opened his eyes lazily. Model. An Yai's lifted his hand to rub his hair. This is the first time I've seen a girl liking such a thing. Su Jian turned silent. Jian Jian, using patriotism as a reason was too much of an exaggeration. Naturally, he couldn't use the same excuse again. Su Jian thought silently and decided to try his luck. Because. This is a present. Treasuring a present from someone was a common action. Although it wasn't a clever reasoning, it was at least more normal. Indeed, An Yaz no longer asked. Su Jian lifted his eyes and peeked at him. He wanted to see if An Yaz had believed his words. Unexpectedly, An Yaz was also looking at him with deep and gentle eyes. He most likely believed in the excuse. Su Jian secretly sighed in relief, feeling more relaxed in his heart. Thinking for a moment, in order to gain An Yaz's trust and lower his suspicion, Su Jian decided to increase the number of female interests he had. Yaz, I like three little bears too. A hint of a smile slowly formed in a Yaz's eyes. After work, I will bring some back for you. This time, I want the mocha cake. Okay, dot. After a few days, it was the day when An Yiru would go out and play with her friends. An Yiru invited Su Jian to go together with her. Su Jian hesitated. I don't think that's a good idea. It's your class bonding, what would I go there for? It's just all of us going to the KTV to sing. The more the merrier. Anyiru added, the rest of them brought their friends along as well. Therefore, 
it's fine for sister-in-law to join in, the others should be bringing their girlfriends and boyfriends. Don't you think it's strange bringing your sister-in-law along? Although Su Jian was a little eager due to being trapped at home for so long and wished to go out, he still hesitated. I'm worried that we won't enjoy the same thing. Why won't we? Didn't sister-in-law enjoy your time with me? You're only older than us by one to two years. Why would we not enjoy the same thing? And you encouraged enthusiastically, sister-in-law. You are bored at home anyway. Treat it as accompanying me and go with me. All right, Su Jian agreed. Coincidentally, An Yaz also had come back, and Yeru told him about bringing Su Jian out to play. As she saw An Yaz knitting his brows and showing a disagreeing expression, she added quickly, Third brother, do you want to join us? At their side, Su Jian remarked, We won't be able to enjoy the same thing as your third brother. He's already 30 years old older than us by almost 10 years. In this age, one year is a generation gap, not to mention 10 years. An Yaz. Ultimately, An Yaz became the driver for the two of them. An Yiru, third brother, you can let us off near the hotel beside the KTV. We will walk in ourselves. Su Jian guessed that An Yiru did not want her classmates to know about her rich family background. Su Jian couldn't help but feel that was so good natured. An Yaz replied with an N and requested, You need to be back home by 10, I will come and fetch the two of you later. No problem. An Yiru smiled, I will take good care of sister in law. Third brother, you don't have to worry. Su Jian felt a little embarrassed. An Yaz turned back to look at him before nodding at An Yiru. An Yaz sent the two of them to the location and left. An Yiru pulled Su Jian into the KTV that they had planned to meet in. The KTV was not new to Su Jian. Before his rebirth, he had come here before. The interior design was vogue and the price was decent. Teenagers liked to come here. An Yiru pulled him towards the private box room they booked and opened the door. There was already five people in the room. It only took one look to be able to tell that they were university students the same age as An Yiru. As soon as they saw An Yiru arrive, two girls waved happily at her. Yiru, An Yiru greeted them one by one. Looking towards Su Jian, she introduced her friends. Lin Huan. Chi, my good friends, the two of them there are their family members. Pausing for a moment, she introduced Su Jian. This is my, I'm Xiao Ru's friend. My name is Su Jian. Not wanting to be introduced as a sister-in-law, Su Jian interrupted Nye Ru's words and hastily introduced herself. A male looked towards Su Jian and smiled enthusiastically. A friend of a beauty is still a beauty. Hello beauty, I'm Zhu Hai. Also a good friend of Yiru, who's your good friend? Lin Huan laughed as she rebuked Zuhai. Looking at Su Jian, she said, Su Jian, just ignore him. As long as there is a beauty, this person will always think that she's his good friend. The group of teenagers were laughing about freely and energetically, causing Su Jian to be affected by the mood as well. After a while, the door opened again. Everyone looked towards the door, only hearing Zagaya shouting loudly. Arji, you are finally here, and Yiru's eyes suddenly shone brightly. However, Su Jian abruptly turned stiff. A sudden thought came into his mind. Arji, the person that came in was none other than his blood brother, Suji. Note, one Hiti, this is a symptom from traditional Chinese medicine TCM. Hot weather or eating Hiti food such as fried food or chocolate cause our body to become Hiti and will result in nosebleed sore throats and ulcers in our mouth. Here is some info, http colon slash slash www.benefitsofhoney.com slash heaty dot html. Two cooling food, opposite of heaty food, helps to balance out the heatiness in one's body. Additional information on the above link. Three spleen and kidney deficiency, more TCM, chapter 37, in my life, I only have this one brother. Su Jian stared at Su Ji with his thoughts in a mess. This kid seemed to have lost weight, but still looked handsome as always. In the past, Su Jian always forced Su Ji to admit that his brother looked more handsome. If Su Ji did not do it, Su Jian would gesture towards him as if he were going to beat him up. The two brothers would frequently mess around on the sofa. Then, Mother Su would use a feather duster to chase them away. However, looking at it honestly, 
Tsujian had to admit that this kid looked better than his brother. He had thick eyebrows and large eyes, he was also taller than Tsujian himself. He belonged to the category that attracted girls. Tsuji's temper was also better than Tsujian's. Although he was always bullied by his brother as a kid, he never complained to their mother. At most, he would secretly change his brother's contact name in his phone to my wonderful brother or all sorts of strange names. The relationship between the two brothers had always been good. When Suji was young, he admired his brother Suji Ann very much. He frequently followed his brother, always calling brother from behind. Sometimes, when Suji Ann bullied him, he would start crying. However, a few moments later, he would start hanging on to Su Jian's arm again. As they grew up, the kid back then became a handsome 18 to 19 year old teenager. Su Ji became more sharp and calm. However, when he faced Su Jian, he was still the younger brother that always relied on his older brother. Su Jian thought with a little pride, the first time this kid wrote a love letter, it was to his brother who taught him, his first dream was enlightened by his brother, his first shooting was guided by his brother. A lot of Suji's firsts were derived from the efforts of his brother. Of course, Suji's first experience of parting forever, was also through him. He recalled Suji's grieved look during his funeral. Suji and felt sour. He died so suddenly, and he didn't dare to imagine how sad his family felt. Even though he had rebirthed, he had no way of reconciling with them. Ever since his rebirth, he tried to avoid thinking about such things. However, once he saw Suji, all his sadness resurfaced. Suji came alone. As he walked in, he started greeting the others one by one. When he reached an Yiru, he smiled at her. Yiru, and Yiru's eyes were shining brightly. Her voice was more restrained than usual. Aji, you are here? Suji nodded his head. He looked up towards Suji An who was by an Yiru's side and froze. An Yiru hastily introduced. This is my friend Suji An. Then, she pointed at Suji and told Suji An, This is my classmate, Suji. Hearing the two words Suji An, Suji's expression changed. He stared at Suji An. Suji An felt guilty. He forced himself to smile. Good day, classmate Su. Suji was still staring at him. Then he replied, Good day, Suji An. Not long after, Everyone had arrived. Eight to nine teenagers had gathered together. After chatting for a while, they began singing. The room instantly became lively. Usually, when visiting the KTV, Suji An was considered the king of the microphone. However, Suji An was not in the mood to sing today. He felt that Suji kept looking at him. When Suji An saw An Yiru start chatting with Suji, he relaxed slightly. Using restocking of snacks as an excuse, Suji An took the chance to leave the room. There was free food in their lobby. Suji An walked with familiarity towards the food and started filling up his plate with the food. When he was getting to the drinks, a voice sounded suddenly by his side. Have I met you before? Suji An was shocked. His hands shook and the drink in his hand spilled. Be careful. Suji suddenly appeared by his side and quickly found some tissues. Use this to wipe. Thank you. Suji scrutinized him and asked again. Have we met somewhere before? Suji An saw that he couldn't avoid the topic so he answered, We met at your brother's funeral. The moment he mentioned the funeral, Suji's expression turned awful. Then he showed an expression of sudden realization. Ah, I remember. He smiled at Suji An. At that time, I thought that you were my brother's girlfriend. I'm not. Suji An did not want Suji to be suspicious of him. So he honestly said, your brother and I were in the same traffic accident. It's just that I only suffered an injury, while your brother. Seeing, Suji's hurt expression, Suji An's heartstring was tugged. He said with a low voice, I'm sorry, it's okay. Suji's voice was deep and low. It's just that I did not expect you were also called Suji An as you have the same surname and name as my brother. Suji An's heart jumped. He flatly smiled. Yes. I find it quite a coincidence too. Suji An turned around and continued taking more food. Suji helped out by the side. He saw Suji An taking a mocha cake. So he asked, you like mocha cake too? Suji An's hand halted. He acted natural and asked, do you like it too? No Suji shook his head. My brother likes it very much. Oh. 
Su Jian flatly organized his words. Many girls like to eat this, though it seems rare for a man to like sweet food. Yes, Su Ji laughed, my brother likes to eat them, but he's afraid of people laughing at him so he always makes me buy some for him. Su Jian recalled the days where he would use force or money to make Su Ji visit the cake shop to buy him some cake. Unconsciously, his lips lifted to form a smile. When he came back to reality from his memories, he realized that Suji was looking at him. He said hastily, the two of you share a good relationship. Suji replied, in my life, I only have this one brother. Suji and I suddenly felt hot. Ah, your parents okay? At that time, they looked very sad. Suji and knew that he shouldn't ask this much but he couldn't control himself. Suji's expression darkened. They are okay, they're just not able to handle the fact that the older ones are sending off the younger one. After all, my brother's accident was too sudden. Suji An's heart clenched. He hurriedly asked in concern, then, is their health all right? As he saw Suji looking at him, he felt that his concern was too out of the ordinary, so he added, old people's health isn't good. If they receive such a big shock, we have to watch out for them. Suji did not think much about it. He replied, thank you for your concern, my parents health is okay. Although it is inevitable that they will be sad, we can only leave it to time. Suji An asked quickly, what about you, me? Suji continued, it's the same for me. Do you miss your brother? Suji An couldn't control himself and asked softly. Suji froze and his expression darkened. After a while, he pursed his lips and waved his hand off at Su Jian. Not anymore. Su Jian, who was feeling sad and sour, became unhappy immediately. This damn brat dared to not miss me. What happened to your brotherhood? At this moment, An Yiru came over. As she saw the two of them talking, she asked in hesitation, The two of you know each other? Su Jian answered, We met once at my brother's funeral. Su Jian explained quietly, his brother and I met the same traffic accident. And Yiru's eyes widened. She looked at Suji apologetically and helplessly, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Suji replied warmly, it's okay. The three of them carried the food back into the room. And Yiru kept losing her focus. However, Suji An had his own troubles, so he did not notice. When he was squeezing his brain to think of a way to talk to Suji unsuspiciously and naturally for a while more, and Yiru suddenly came towards him and said quietly, third sister-in-law, eh? It was rare to see An Yiru be so coy. I would like to ask you about Arji's brother. Suji An's heart froze. He said in hesitation, I don't know his brother. I've only heard that his brother passed away in the accident, so I asked your third brother to bring me to the funeral. Oh. An Yiru looked at Suji who was talking to Zhu Hai. She said with a sad expression, I didn't even know that Suji's brother passed away. No wonder he looked unhappy during this period. Suji An didn't know what to say so he started eating silently. While eating, a phone that was placed beside a plate filled with snacks started vibrating. It was probably a message. Initially, Suji An only gave it a short glance. However, after a moment, he stared at the phone. He remembered that this was Suji's phone. The phone model was quite old. Suji An remembered that he bought this phone for Suji as a birthday present two years ago. Not long before his accident, Suji had said that he had earned some money during his part time job during the holidays and could finally change his phone. However, after a few months, he still never changed his phone. As if he were possessed, Suji An picked the phone up and swiped the unlock button. In the next moment, his eyes turned red. The person grinning on the phone screen, who else would it be other than the old him? Dot. After sending off Suji An and An Yiru, An Yaz drove to the company. There was a department working overtime. Seeing President An's sudden entrance, a tired worker was instantly awakened, looking ready for a struggle. An Yaz looked cold. He gave a glance and continued walking into the lift. The moment he left, the solemn workers were immediately lively. Why is his majesty suddenly here? He scared the crap out of me. Yeah, he came alone too. I guess he's not here to work overtime. I'm sure he is not here to work overtime. This afternoon, I saw his majesty go home. Recently, his majesty has been getting off work on time, and he has not worked overtime for a while. Yes yes, I've also heard of it. However, this is normal. His majesty married recently, 
and there's a goddess waiting for him at home. Hey, I have heard that the goddess looks like Queen J. Is it true? What? Where did you hear that from? Why didn't I know? That is a must. If she is not a super beauty, why would his majesty fall for her? She must be a beauty at Queen J's standard. Is Jian pretty? Why do I not think so? Hey, insult my goddess again and I will ruin your face. Stop. Why are the two of you arguing? You like goddess Jian, so she looks like Jian? Then, I like Huang Bo. Then, I say, the goddess surely is a beauty like Huang Bo to be able to gain his majesty's attention. Shit. There are three different views now. Sigh. Don't forget. Looking at our majesty's family background and his physical appearance, I'm sure he's met many beauties. However, look at the results. His majesty did not like any of them. What does this tell us? I think it's because his majesty has a special taste. If not, why would his majesty not fall for a mainstream beauty like me? I want to vomit. Hey, the few of you. Why are you guys still talking? Get to work. Naturally. Majesty and would not know about his employee's discussion about his aesthetic taste. Reaching his office, An Yai's started working. However, after a while, he put down the file in his hands. He, who was usually a hard-working person, could not absorb the information at all. An Yai's massaged his temples. Following his desire, he looked at the time. Only thirty minutes has passed. An Yai's stared at the time on his phone his expression heavy. Pulling open the curtains, the sight of the city illuminated by the lights came into view. An Yaz stood silently in front of the window for a good few minutes before he picked up the file again. Just like that, he knitted his brows and worked for who knows how long before the phone beside his hand rang. An Yaz picked up the phone immediately. The noisy background music could be heard through the phone. However, An Yiru's voice still came through clearly. Third brother, Quickly come and pick third sister-in-law up. She is drunk. Chapter 38, I like you the most. When An Yaz opened the door to the private room, he was blasted by a burst of music. In this world, only mama is the best. Children with moms are like treasures. When I throw myself into mama's embrace, my happiness is never ending. It was a song everyone knew, but the singer sang it with utmost brutality. It was the first time that worldly president and had ever listened to someone who had the power to sing this song in such a way that the composer would be hard pressed to recognize it. An Yaz just frowned at first, but when he recognized that the person holding the mic while singing earnestly was a figure he was extremely familiar with, he couldn't help but be dumbstruck. Su Jian was still tearfully and tragically singing, in this world, only mama is best. Motherless children are like weeds. Leaving mom's embrace, where can I find happiness? The room full of people listening to the song all displayed I'm drunk two expressions. When she saw An Yaz enter, An Yiru immediately greeted him. Third brother. An Yaz calmly responded, What's going on here? An Yiru glanced awkwardly at Su Jian. We just drank some beer but I would never have thought that third sister-in-law would get drunk after drinking a little bit. Su Jian was already emotional from seeing Suji, but when he saw his own picture on the wallpaper of Suji's phone, a wave of sentiment, longing, and sorrow surged up. But he also clearly knew that it was impossible for him to confess his real identity to Suji. He also didn't dare have too much interaction with Suji. He died in the same car accident as Su Gurley. Their names were even the same and he had amnesia. It wouldn't be impossible to uncover each of these things if anyone had the slightest suspicion. He didn't know if he'd ever tell anyone close to him the secret of his rebirth, but right now he wouldn't. After all, this matter wasn't just related to him as it involved several families. Also, the truth was too strange, not everyone could accept it. He didn't want to take that chance. It was just that it wasn't that easy to suppress the feelings of missing family. He was able to be halfway at ease after finding out his parents were doing well, but he still heartworkingly missed his parents and little brother. He was depressed but wasn't able to announce it to the world. Thus, when the crowd of young people started drinking some beer to liven things up, he didn't object. His alcohol tolerance wasn't the best in the past, but a few bottles of beers weren't a problem, so he didn't think much of it. What he didn't realize was that Su Gurley's body was the type to get drunk easily so when Su Jian drank two big glasses of beer, he was past the point of no return. 
Unexpectedly, the drunken Su Jian didn't make a fuss and remained obediently seated. He only hogged the mick and wouldn't let go. His singing skills were unable to be complimented on. Every song's melody could be distorted to the heavens. Thus, a room full of people could only suffer in the midst of happiness, suffering because of the demonic sounds piercing their ears, happy because of being able to see a beauty earnestly singing and earnestly going off tune. At first, and Yeru didn't notice that something was off about Su Jian. She only noticed when Su Jian selected a long string of strange songs and started singing her heart out. And Yeru urged, third sister-in-law, do you want to eat something? Su Jian hugged the mick tightly and shook his head like a drum-shaped rattle. No, let me first sing a song to calm down. And Yeru, Zihai came over and said, Beauty. See you singing by yourself looks so lonesome, why don't you let me sing a few songs? Su Jian showed a face that seemed to be weighed down with experience. All of mankind is alone. I'm already used to it. Zuhai. Su Ji came over and coaxed. Su Jian, why don't you rest a little before singing again? Otherwise it won't be good for your throat. Su Jian looked at him with red rimmed eyes. What use is a good throat? My heart still hurts the same. Suji. The room full of people were defeated so everyone awkwardly listened to Suji and throw away the original composer's tunes and miraculously perform new versions of Dong Ah, Beloved Mum, Kalabush Gord Brothers, Come Home Often, The Elders Back Home, Far High, You Don't Understand Love, and so on. 1. When a Yaz arrived, Suji An was just performing the most moving piece, in this world, only Momo is best. In spite of the curious looks from the room full of people, An Yaz walked directly towards Su Jian and said with a frown, Jian Jian, come home with me. Then he reached out to remove the mick from Su Jian's hands. Su Jian protected the mick in his hands with all his might and a guarded expression. I'm a performer, not a prostitute. An Yaz, An Yiru sat nearby holding in her laughter. Third sister-in-law. Third brother came to take you home. Su Jian looked blankly at An Yaz for a while as he blinked, then dazedly said, Ye dots. An Yaz's heart suddenly melted. He took the opportunity to take away his microphone while he was in a daze. He gently said, mm, It's me. Be good. Let's go home. Teardrops still hung off of Su Jian's eyelashes as he dazedly allowed Yaz to take his hand. An Yiru sighed. Third brother, you're still the best. Just now, it was no use no matter how much we coaxed her, as soon as you came, third sister-in-law listened to you. An Yaz tightened his grip on Su Jian's hand. He said to An Yiru, I'll bring her home first. Are you coming with? An Yiru shook her head. It's still early. I want to play a bit longer. An Yaz took in what was going on in the room. He saw that the group of young people were being relatively tame and muttered, All right. I'll ask the driver to come over here to wait for you. Don't forget to go home before 10. And you grinned. Don't worry, third brother. You don't have to worry about me. Just focus on taking care of third sister-in-law. And Yaz turned and looked at the person who dazedly allowed him to hold her hand. His eyes carried a small amount of helplessness. Then I'll take her home now. And Yaz said to An Yiru and nodded to everyone in the room. Then, he led Su Jian outside by the hand. While he talked, Su Jian stood obediently by his side. Unexpectedly however, when he tried to lead Su Jian outside, Su Jian became recalcitrant. Su Jian glared in rejection as he yelled, Help me, help me, Mr. Policeman, this is the guy. An Yaz. In the end, An Yaz had to forcibly drag Su Jian away with his hand over her mouth. After he carried Su Jian into the car. An Yaz sat in the driver's seat and woodenly took a few breaths. He turned to look at the girl who had once again become quiet and lovable. An Yaz slowly released a breath and reached over to buckle her in. Su Jian earnestly watched him buckle the seatbelt for him. Suddenly, he said softly, Yaz, where are we going? An Yaz saw that he sobered up some, stroked his hair, and his voice involuntarily softened, Be good, we're going home. When he heard the words, going home, Su Jian started to frown and sang in a mournful voice, Come home, come home, I need you. The veins on An Yaz's forehead bulged out. Stop singing. Su Jian immediately changed to a different tune, singing to his heart's content. When I want to sing, I'll sing. I'll sing loud and clear even if no one claps for me. At least I can bravely enjoy myself. 
the veins on Anaya's forehead pulsed. He suddenly lowered his head to muzzle the mouth that wouldn't stop singing. Su Jian's voice was suddenly cut off. He was motionless except for his blinking eyes. The confusion in the girl's eyes allowed Anaya's fretful heart to slowly calm down. The movements of his mouth became gentler. At that moment, Su Jian suddenly sucked with curiosity on something soft that had been inserted in his mouth. An yais. When Su Jian was released, his lips were already somewhat swollen and his seatbelt had already been released. He laid in An Yaz's arms. President An, who had all his energy converted to tender feelings from what had just happened, wiped the tear tracks from the girl's eyes with his fingers. He said in a low voice, Why did you just cry? At first, Su Jian just stared blankly, but as if he had just thought of something. He puckered his lips and said in a hurt tone, I miss my mom. An Yais was startled by this answer. He had not come back to his senses yet when he heard Su Jian start to sing in a mournful voice, Oh, Mama, Mama in the candlelight, An Yais's temple pulsed as if his veins would burst. Didn't you forget everything? How is it that you miss your mom? This time, Su Jian's response was very smooth. How could I forget? Then he suddenly grabbed onto An Yaz's neck and shouted out aggrievedly and with much emotion, Mom. An Yaz's temple veins finally burst. Su Jian still laid in his embrace and continued to sing, Mama in the candlelight, the flowering shadows of your black hair, your face is imprinted with many worries, your curved back is no longer straight. Why did your eyes lose their shine? An Yaz held the person in his arms in a stupor as he listened to the small girl in his arms slowly and with deep feeling go out of tune as she sang. He could only feel like life was so exhausting. I am not your mother. These five words were squeezed out like tears of blood. Su Jian held on to him tightly and said resentfully, Mom, why don't you acknowledge me? I'm your most loved Jian Jian. An Yais. Su Jian let out a few sobs then slowly quieted down. Exhausted to the bottom of his heart, An Yais held her as he softly called, Jian Jian. Su Jian automatically shifted into a more comfortable position in his arms then looked up at him. He softly burbled, Yais, I want to drink water. Before, when his leg was not at full capacity, if he woke up in the middle of the night and wanted water, he would waken Yais and ask him to pour some for him. At this moment, he had sung a lot and also cried so he felt thirsty as he fell into his habit of calling on An Yais. He seemed to have sobered a bit. An Yais looked down at him then hesitantly asked, Who am I? It was better if he hadn't asked because Su Jian immediately started to belt out, Don't ask me who I am, just love me, don't you dare sing again. An Yaz who had brought it upon himself started to regret his past deeds. Su Jian suddenly cut himself off, dazedly looked at An Yaz for a while, then buried his face in his chest as he softly said, Then you sing for me. No. An Yaz refused expressionlessly. The rejected Su Jian immediately started to sing tragically, I think you don't really love me. When caring slowly becomes coldness, all right, I'll sing. An Yaz said through clenched teeth. Su Jian immediately stopped making a sound and only breathed in through his nose loudly. An Yaz hesitated, then hesitated some more. In the end, he was worried that the small girl in his arms would suddenly make another disturbance so he softly started to sing. He didn't know many popular songs, but this song was one that someone really liked to sing so he remembered it. He softly started to hum it then suddenly his mood changed. I know, it is hard to fall in love when you feel blue deep inside your heart. I'm sure you got so much more to give. Believe in me. I can let it shine again. Surrender. Baby please. Surrender. I will be so tender. If you trust in me. 2. Outside of the car window, the scenes of the night blurred. Pedestrians rushed here and there in haste by the road, each with their own stories. An Yais looked down at the person in his arms. Su Jian obediently lay in his arms as if she had already fallen asleep. An Yais let out a slow sigh and felt as if he were in low spirits. After lightly rubbing Su Jian's hair, An Yais loosened his hold in order to put Su Jian back in her seat so he could drive home. He didn't expect that with one small movement, Su Jian would suddenly burrow further into his arms then applaud loudly with a pa pa pa. An Yais. Su Jian held his waist tight, 
rubbing his face against his chest. Sounds good. An Yai's silently sucked in a breath of air. Su Jian said softly, I like you uh, a lot. An Yai's. Su Jian was still muttering, I like you the most. An Yai's throat tightened up. He said hoarsely, Jian Jian. Do you know what you're saying? Su Jian was silent for a while. Right when An Yai's suspected that he had fallen asleep, he suddenly spoke with a soft, frail, a bit coquettish yet very sincere voice, I know, in the past, I was the one at fault, the one at fault. Now, I finally realized, Su Jian held on to An Yai's tightly, the one I love the most is you. An Yai's sat there silently and remained motionless. The sound of his heart beating in his chest was louder than it had ever been. He didn't know how to describe how he felt. He could only lift his hand slowly and lightly slide his finger from the person in his embrace's forehead to the corner of her mouth. Then, he cupped her face. With her eyes closed, the girl obediently lay in his embrace as if she had finally found the safest place in the world. An Yaz felt his the cockles of his heart start to warm up. For the past thirty years, he had been confessed to many times and confessed his love as well, but he had never experienced a feeling like this before. He thought, so it's like this that when a couple comes together harmoniously. Note, one far high is the villain, the Buddhist monk in the tale of the white snake. Two you can trust in me. Chapter 39, An Yaz used to like someone, An Yaz used to like someone, a lot. Jim Ming Fai once told him, Yaz, Jian is your predestined calamity. An Yaz knew this, but everybody had at least one point in their lives where they were obstinate in the face of reality. The one time in An Yaz's life where he was obstinate in the face of reality was Jian. Dot. An Yaz still remembered his first meeting with Jian. It was at his oldest brother's birthday banquet. Many guests, including adults and children, attended the banquet. It was very lively. But that day, he wasn't happy at all. That was because he had just fought with his second older brother. He, who wasn't very good with words, was utterly and completely defeated by his second brother. The ten-year-old third master and didn't have his current, strong disposition so he sorrowfully ran into the corner of the garden, hiding his red eyes. Right at his lowest point, a warm voice rang out, What's wrong? Dot. When An Yais looked up in surprise, a face as beautiful as the voice appeared in his sight. The thirteen-year-old Gyan who had already blossomed into a young lady looked at him with a face full of concern. An Yais looked at her guardedly. Who are you? Jian crouched lower with a smile and glitters like stars in her eyes. My name is Jian. Dot. Afterwards, An Yais learned from his well-informed second brother of the gentle, older sister's identity. Jian was the second miss of the Ji family, but Gyan was not related to the Ji family as she came with her mother who had remarried into the Ji family. Then, her last name was changed to Ji. The Ji family and the In family got along well. So later on, An Yaz had many chances to see Jian. Jian was beautiful and kind-natured. After their first meeting, she looked after An Yaz a lot. An Yaz who had two elder brothers that weren't that great at looking after people, he naturally fell for this gentler older sister. Furthermore, the two of them went to the same school. His elementary school was near her middle school so he frequently went to see her. Sometimes she knew, sometimes she didn't. Later on, he was in middle school as she entered high school. The high school was a bit far from the middle school so he specially bought a bicycle and would go over to see her whenever he had time. Even her good friends started recognizing him. Whenever they saw him they would smile. Jian, that younger brother of yours is here again. Jian just smiled helplessly as she softly reproached. Xiao's, you'll tire yourself out running here all the time. In the future, don't do it anymore. An Yaz was happy in his heart, but he displayed a false cool expression that was exclusive to teenagers. I like running. Dot. Later on, she went to college in another city. High schooler An Yaz started to secretly plan to test into that city's college. During break, An Yaz went out of his way to go to that city to see her. He would never have imagined that he would see her thin and pallid face filled with grief. Under An Yaz's interrogation, she admitted that her boyfriend had cheated on her. An Yaz was silent for a long while, then asked, Who is he? An Yaz beat up the man who had made her cry, but he couldn't have imagined that Gyan would rush over suddenly then cry while holding and being held by that man. That day, 
It rained a lot. An Yaz stood in the rain with an unreadable expression on his face. Dot. Afterwards, An Yaz never did something so rash again. A once rash youth grew more steady, composed, and more taciturn. It was only when he faced Kiyan that there would be a particular gentleness under his taciturn expression. As usual, Jian treated him well, so well that he couldn't let go of the yearning in his heart. He once mustered the courage to ask her, Why do you treat me so well? She said, Xiao's, don't you know that you are irreplaceable in my heart? Dot. Because of her words, all the concealed hurt in his heart seemed to fade, and the deeply hidden affection in his heart began to flourish again. Then, Jian decided to enter the entertainment circle. The Ji family did not agree but Kiyan stubbornly continued ahead. She said that playing different roles and experiencing different lives was her dream. When most other wealthy families' misses were enjoying their lives and getting married, her persistence in pursuing the life she wanted made her particularly dazzling. An Yaz thought that, as expected, his her was different. Thus, An Yaz secretly begged his oldest brother and second brother. There was an entertainment company in the An family assets. Its resources were naturally plentiful. Also, ever since his second brother An Yaing entered entertainment circles for fun, he'd had some particular successes. As expected, under the secret help of the An family, Jian quickly began to shine. Yet, An Yaz didn't let Jian know all this. Dot. As Jian gradually became more famous, An Yaz's chances to see her gradually decreased. On screen, she looked a bit noble, a bit cool and elegant, as she displayed different expressions. But in An Yaz's heart, she was always the kindest young girl. But, sometimes kindness was also a weapon. An Yaz knew Jian was on and off again with her boyfriend from before, but they had never completely broken up. Every time they fought, Jian, weary and haggard, would come find him. She'd say, Xiao's, you're the only one in this world who can set my mind at rest. Dot. An Yaz was possessive. He also wanted the person he liked to only look at him. Thus, when Jian went to see him again and fell asleep on his couch, An Yaz crouched down in front of her, gently wiped the traces of tears from the corners of her eyes, then confessed to her after she woke up. Jian was silent for a long time, then she displayed her previous kindness, albeit with some regret. I'm sorry Xiao's, I've always treated you like my little brother. But I've never treated you like an older sister. Do you really not know that I haven't treated you like a sister from the very beginning? Dot I know, but forget it. Dot. But how could it be so easy to forget things? He still couldn't let it go. In business, he was always able to make the most accurate judgments and make the most resolute of choices. But, his temperament persistently included a different kind of obstinacy. As a child, whenever he did international math olympiad problems and got stuck on a problem, he would stubbornly refuse to move on to the next one. He wasn't willing to change his line of thought by doing the next problem and would not stop until he solved the current problem. Then, Jian saw him practicing piano once. Jian smiled at him as she said that he looked like a little prince when he was playing the piano. He, who didn't really like playing the piano, started to practice hard to the point where he even won many awards. Except, she had never heard him play the piano that he had practiced for her. In middle school, Jian would frequently feed the feral cats at school. In the beginning, An Yais stood quietly behind her and watched her feed them. The indifferent looking young boy's eyes were filled with tender feelings as he watched the young girl tenderly dote on the small feral cats under the sunlight. But as time went on, Jian got busier with her studies and forgot. Then, Jian stopped feeding the feral cats so An Yais frequently brought food over by himself, continuing on for her. Under the camphor tree, a youth wearing a white shirt and school uniform expressionlessly crouched down as he fed a bedraggled cat, his movements gentle. Jim Mingfei had also once said that he was too obstinate. However, with some things, how could he not be obstinate? Thus, because she said she wanted him to play the piano, he could continue practicing. Thus, when she stopped feeding the feral cats, he could keep feeding them for her. And also, even if she didn't like him, he still liked her uncontrollably. Chapter 40. At that time, he met Su Jian. In the end, Jian broke up with that man. When An Yaz received her phone call, 
he immediately rushed over. Her residence was under surveillance by paparazzi so he took her back to his own residence. He had just brought her into the house when she threw herself into his arms, crying bitterly. And Yaz couldn't say if he was happy or sad, but in the end, he couldn't help but hold her tight. Jian started living in An Yaz's house. That was the happiest period of time in An Yaz's life. Every day after work, she who just happened to be on break after finishing filming had finished making dinner and was waiting for him at home. Even though she'd never cooked much before and her cooking couldn't really be complimented, he still happily ate every bite. After dinner, they nestled together on the couch to watch movies. When he was alone, An Yaz didn't watch much TV other than dramas and TV shows she appeared in. But with her, he could happily watch even the most boring of shows. He knew that she still nursed a wounded heart so he put in a lot of overtime to take her abroad and cheer her up. They leaned against each other watching the northern lights under the night sky of Norway. They strolled through a village in France holding hands, made wishes with their eyes closed in Rome, and watched fireworks in Edinburgh in each other's arms. The past each day like lovers did. The anxiousness in her face slowly disappeared, and was replaced with smiles. When Yaz saw her smiles, he felt that the entire world was dazzling bright. He thought that no matter how tough it had been in the past, he finally had her now. Dot. He secretly had a ring custom made. On the ring, their initials intertwined, as beautiful as a fairy tale. The day he received the ring, he held it and stood in front of a window for a long time. From 10 to almost 30 years old, almost 20 years of saving himself coalesced into the ring in his hand. He suddenly felt as if he were in a trance. Fortunately, it was worth it to save himself. He thought that his obstinacy could finally lead to a perfect ending. Dot. That night, he specially prepared enough fireworks to fill the sky. As the fireworks went off, he brought her to the balcony then brought out the ring box and slowly opened it. He looked her in the eyes as he said, Ah Yan, marry me. Dot. The fireworks exploded one after another in the night sky with loud crashes as if disintegrating dream after dream. Jian stared, motionless, at the ring in front of her. After a long, silent pause, she paled, then whispered, Xiao's, I'm sorry. Dot. That night, An Yaz drove to the beach by himself. He couldn't stay at home because he didn't know how to face her. He sat quietly alone in the car for a long time accompanied by the endless night and the cold sounds of the ocean. At daybreak, An Yaz pulled out the ring and threw it far into the ocean. Then, without looking back, he returned to his car and went home. Dot. When he got home, she had already left. She left a note on the table. It said, Xiao's, I'm sorry. He looked at that note in his hands for a long time then finally understood something. She truly didn't love him. In the past, he always thought that even though she didn't like him as much as he liked her, she at least held some affection for him. Otherwise, why would she lay on his knees while laughing so happily? When they held hands and passed a village garden, why was she so obedient? And when he kissed her, why did she only lower her eyelashes instead of ever avoiding it? But now, anxiety started to flood through him. He thought, most likely, she really didn't like him. Otherwise, how was she able to let him be so unhappy? Dot. When he saw her again, a month had passed. She displayed an apologetic expression as she uneasily said, I'm sorry, Xiao's, for leaving like that on that day. Because I really didn't know how to face you. His expression stayed normal. It's nothing. Dot. Then, he didn't see her for a long time. He got calmer each day. He felt he could finally learn to let it go. After that, he heard the news of her engagement with the man she'd always liked. Dot. When he heard the news, he drank until he was dead drunk. Then, it was Jim Ming Fai who rushed over and sent him to the hospital to actually get alcohol poisoning. Jim Ming Fai pointed at him resentfully. Look at what you've become. Is it worth it to do this to yourself? What use is it to put yourself in a miserable state? That other person is about to marry another man. Yes, even now. Have you not sobered up? Jian simply treats you like a spare tire. No, you can't even be considered a spare tire. One, at most, you're a trash can. He laid in the hospital bed pale and quiet. He thought he probably wouldn't do it again. Once was enough to experience this kind of poisoning. Dot. As his good friend, 
Jim Mingfei saw the entire course of his feelings for her. Though he didn't think highly of it from the very beginning, he said, Yais, have you never heard these song lyrics? Those who cannot obtain affections are always in tumult, those who are favored are secure. He said, Yais, Jian doesn't suit you. She is the ethereal moonlight and doesn't even match well with a mulish one-track minded person like you. Dot. After he was discharged, Jim Mingfei uncharacteristically started to actively introduce him to girls. He asked him, Yais, what kind do you like? You better not say you like the Jian type. You spent your life stupidly trailing after her and never met other women, right? I feel that you just haven't met enough girls. You'll discover after meeting more that there are a lot of good women out there. How could he not understand that? Only, sometimes. Even being logical didn't mean one could control one's own heart. But as matters stood, he finally realized that he was unable to stay obstinate. Dot. People always said the best way to move on was nothing more than starting another relationship. He thought that he might not have feelings, but he would always have time. He searched, hoping to find a girl he was willing to spend a dull, uneventful life with. Dot. When he met Guyan again, she personally told him the news of her impending marriage. She said it nervously and kept peeking at his eyes as if she were afraid that he would suddenly explode. But from beginning to end he stayed calm. He even smiled slightly and said, congratulations. She visibly relaxed and said with eyes full of sincerity, Xiao's, no matter who I marry, you hold a special place in my heart. You'll always be one of my most important people. I can't bear losing you. He smiled at her but didn't say a word, she asked, right, Xiaos, I thought I saw you walking with a girl the other day, is it a girl you like, he said, no, she completely relaxed and said, it's okay if it is, if it is, remember to bring her to my wedding, dot, that night, he went to the bar by himself, he rarely went to that type of place, but that day he didn't know where to go, he didn't want to get wasted again, but ordered a wine cooler and sipped it slowly, people checked him out from time to time, quite a few tried to strike up a conversation, but he was taciturn and didn't give them any notice, at that moment, he met Su Jian, note, one spare tire is like someone's fallback guy that they use for running to when they are sad, almost a friend zoned guy but the girl will keep the guy hooked with ambiguous sections, 